Hey guys, so this is uh, the start to part two of this little series that I'm doing about uh, making Rocksmith charts in, well, Rocksmith. Um, I've got a song here by Carcass that I've been working on. Um, thank you, Logitech. And I synced it up pretty well. It's pretty synced up. This is only one track. Yeah, so if you have a pretty decent chart like the uh, previous one from Trivium, it had like a bunch of a uh, bunch of different tracks, and you went ahead and already mapped up everything, like uh, with the the beat map. Essentially, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to come up here to song track, and you're just gonna want to go over to a different uh, guitar track, like this, and these should be the same over every track. So essentially, all you would have to do is hit F12, and then go back and find the tabs for this. This is Carcass Rot and Roll. Um, I can't remember if I did, I'll say sure. Uh, I think I did the top one, try the bottom one. And this is the new chart or the new uh the new track that we just imported. And yeah, okay, this is different. So it should be in sync. And it sounds like it is, which is cool. Awesome. I don't know what's different about this. This might just be like a different um, harmony in some parts. Yeah, it looks like it's got some different harmonies here. Cool. So that's if you have a pretty decent uh, tab that you found online. And I don't know what the other ones are, but let's uh, let's go try to find out. Tabs. I don't know if this is the bassist. Okay, it looks like it is. So that's pretty cool. But uh, if you want to learn the shortcut for um, the slide up, I think it's a uh, control U. Yeah, so it's control U for unpitched slide. Um, sometimes you'll get a note where it's like you set the unpitched slide to like, let's say eight. And then it does this, as you can see right here. Um, I don't know why it does that. It only usually does that when you import uh, tabs in. But if you want to fix that, and you're just finding any weird errors, you just control C, that note. And this is my little trick to get to where this note is uh, perfectly. If you right click on it, or sorry, not right click, if you middle mouse on it, you go to the next note with this arrow and then you go to the previous note with this arrow, and this puts your little seeker right right where the note is. And that's how you know you'll be perfect every time. So yeah, so we are Control C. We're gonna delete that one, Control V, and we know it was a three, right? So we're gonna wanna make it go back to three. And then if you do Control, or no, yeah, Control U, this will bring the unpitched slide and it's going up to five. And now it's sliding up to five. And that's that doesn't sound like it's perfect right there, but you can play play around with it. Like for me, it sounds like it kind of starts. Yeah, something like that. And there's even crazier stuff too. Uh, that I'll get to in the future where you can uh, go into tech view and place notes and have it do different things. That that will be a later video. So this base chart should be pretty much set to go. Obviously you're going to want to test and uh, go through corrections 
always test your charts. When you put them in Rocksmith, you will almost always find something that's off or wrong. Don't be like these people that are uploading uh, uh, charts just because they got it. They got it uh, all synced up. A lot of the times, you'll find you'll find errors. Yeah, it sounds pretty sounds pretty good. So the next thing that you're probably gonna want to do is uh, convert this to uh, a DLC for you to put it in Rocksmith, and you're always gonna want to make sure you save your stuff. Um, if you come up with stuff like this, one or more chords doesn't have the correct finger information. Update them now. I just hit no, and then you'll get this. Uh, I'll just hit OK, and then it saves. So yeah, no changes save anyways. Yes, no, OK. I saved it twice there. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up RS Toolkit. And I know I have an out-of-date version of this. Oh. This version I have is out-of-date, but um, I found some weird errors with the newest version, and I don't know why it only affected me. So I just went back to this, and this is what I know. But uh, essentially, you're going to want to uh, fill this in. And you can start that by finding the audio. You're going to want to navigate to where Editor on Fire saves stuff. I don't know where your specific location would be. But uh, where's Carcass? I mean, there it is. Okay, so I always usually get confused which one this has the leading silence. So what you can do is you can hit open, right? Yeah. And if this has leading silence, this is the one that you're going to want to... Yeah, th okay, so this, this has leading silence at the beginning. So that's the one you're going to want to choose. The one that I think it's called, it just calls a guitar. And that's going to be the audio. The next thing you're going to want to do is uh, put in the DLC key. This is just what um, Rocksmith will call it in your DLC folder. Uh, for some reason, it wants you to do this first. So you can just generally do stuff like carcass underscore rot and roll. Something like that. And usually for testing, I just do test a one in version one. And then obviously you're gonna wanna go in and fill all this in. So let's do that real quick. Actually, I don't know what album this is on. Let me load up Spotify. I don't even know what year it came out. Is it really on Heartwork? Oh, it's a disc two, okay. 93. I think the tempo is you don't you don't have to be specific with the tempo. You can literally put whatever, it doesn't matter. But you can just do like 200 or something. Album art. I think I have no, I don't have my heartwork stuff anymore. So what you can do is you can just go to image artwork album cover. I don't remember which one I used, but you can, as long as it's like a JPEG or a PNG, it should work. I usually save it in this folder. Yeah, it's a JPEG. It should work. And then there it is. Okay, for arrangements, you're going to want to click add. It'll open up like another box. Browse, and then in that... Uh, EOF folder that I created, you have your stuff here. So I'm pretty sure. Is this a bass tab? Oh no, okay, it's just asking for the, the tuning. The tuning here, I think, is B standard. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll go into uh, doing tones and stuff. 
But for right now, let's just get this in the game. So that's the first one. Let's add the base. It's definitely not E standard. Sometimes the base tunings are very, very messed up. I think I think that should work. Okay, it it doesn't like it. I think that's the tuning. If not, we'll fix it later. I actually can't tell if I did that right. So I'm gonna make sure I add both those. So first for the guitar 22, and then the bonus guitar. Okay, so now once you have this in here, you're going to want to hit generate. And WIs should spool up and uh, create the DLC for you. You're going to get this little message right here. Just hit yes, and then this is where you're going to save it to your Rocksmith DLC folder. And it'll load. Wow, it's taking its sweet time. Okay. Eh, whatever. Okay, so this, you're, you're, go that, you're also going to want to save this. This is if you ever want to come back and load up this template for... Um, your EOF into RS Toolkit. So this just saves this. Um, th this just saves this, right? And it's going to save automatically in that EOF created folder. So that's cool. Okay, so I'm loaded into Rocksmith here. And the one of the first things I noticed right off the bat is that my chart is really low. It's really, really low. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. So you're going to fire up RS Toolkit. You're going to load your template. What? Okay. I guess I'm going to make a new template. Make sure whenever you're importing stuff into this, you do the tones... Uh, first, find your DLC folder, find something you like. And delete that default and then you're going to want to make sure you just rename this to um what you have in your in your chart um it's this right here and for whatever reason it's if you go up closer to zero okay so that should be significantly louder and since we made a change what you're going to want to do is do three you're changing something in this value and something in this value and it will show up as its own specific uh, version of the chart make sure you're in your DLC you're also going to have multiple multiple things show up um, I can show you how to navigate that so find your DLC folder and you can sort it by uh, date modified and it'll show up near the top here. So as you can see, there are uh, three versions. These first two are versions one and two, and this is the one that we just made. So in order to delete those, you can't have it open in Rocksmith. So what you're gonna wanna do is just scroll away, open up like a menu, and then just hit delete on those.
and then it should automatically enumerate. If it doesn't, what you can do is you can go to the shop and this will just automatically enumerate everything. Might take a minute. Yeah, you can go to like the songs here. Let it let it do its thing. And now what you're gonna want to do is look for the song rot. And here it is. You'll see this pop up, but this only does it when you're editing. When you close Rocksmith, these will disappear. The audio should be louder now. Okay, I think it sounds definitely louder. I think we're on the right track. Actually, let me let me see if that's actually loud enough. Oops. Yeah. I, I think I want it to be just a little bit louder. So then you just, uh, not UF, you bring up Rocksmith Toolkit, change this value, change this value, and then we go up more. So yeah, I think it says here, Okay, yeah, for some reason it says if you go towards negative 30, it gets louder. But that's uh, that's for some reason backwards. The, the more you have it increase from negative, so you, you go positive, this is getting louder. This is just the preview for when you hover over the song in-game. That might be a little bit too loud. But let's find out. Oops. Yeah, that's how you make it louder. I didn't realize this was a different path. Okay, so if you have something here where it's like rhythm one and rhythm two, the way to fix that is to go to um, RS Toolkit and see, I have like two rhythms here because this, this tab didn't come with like a lead. So essentially what you can do is find the, the main like rhythm. Like I know there's a, a higher and a lower harmony. So what I'll do is I'll make the lower harmony the main rhythm. I just, I need to figure out. I think Guitar 22 is the, the main one. Eh, it doesn't matter. Essentially what you would do is you would uh, click edit and then default rhythm and then you can do alternate rhythm. So this will make it to where it's like when you're in the rhythm you have like little sections down here called other arrangements and it goes alt alt rhythm so that's how you would do that as you can see here it fixed it we're on the rhythm section you got your main rhythm and then you got your alternate rhythm okay so another thing that you're gonna want to go through and do is make sure that your uh your rocksmith chart is not only correct, but also if there is weird things like this, where this is saying to go from uh, six and seven to nine to 10 to 14. That 14, that's such a big stretch. You could take that um, 14 on the, what's that, the A string? Yeah, because we're in, we're in uh, B standard, so that's the A string. Or I could just go by colors, the blue string. Um, that 14 can be changed to a 9 on the string above it. 
the, the higher string. It's slightly different in sound, but it makes that way easier. So now I can keep my hands in the same position rather than switching it up so much. Oh no, it didn't, okay. So, that's a really big stretch. So essentially, you can take that 14 and change it to a nine. And that's uh, some things you'll pick up over time is going through Rocksmith charts and figuring out how to do stuff differently. So instead of, you can do, It's the same thing, it's just made slightly differently. So now that we figured that out, what you're going to want to do is go into here and you see this 14? I think, right? Yeah, you're gonna wanna change it to, what do we say, nine? Yeah, so I guess I should explain what I'm doing. Um, you can do this either a couple of different ways, but I guess what I'll show y'all is just middle mouse over it. You're going to want to delete this, and we're going to the string that's above it, or higher in pitch. And nine. So that would be... Since uh, since we're going from string to string, that can't be a pull-off. So what you would just do is come here, PO, center pull-off, just click that to none, and there you go. And the other thing that you would probably want to do is if this kind of thing for this exact riff reoccurs, which it does multiple times in this, you're gonna to want to go through and you make sure you change that, and it's a little tedious, but that is uh, that is the charter's life, you know. So a way that you could do this is by just highlighting that, Shift, highlight that, Control C, and then where is it? So the nine should be the fourteen. So what you're gonna to want to do is click on a note that's right beside it, click on the arrow. And bam, we are perfectly where this note should be. And you're going to want to make sure you highlight that. Oh, I got the note behind it. Okay, just make sure you're not deleting anything you shouldn't be. Delete. Control V. And yeah, basically just do that for as many times as that needs to be done. Okay, thank God. I think there's more later on in the song, but you get the idea of how sped up that was. It can be a little time consuming. Yep, there's more. Okay, well, I'm just gonna cut here. Okay, so we just corrected, well, it didn't correct. We, we just made it a little easier to play. Uh, we just made this one a little bit easier to play, and then let's check the other riff. Yeah, sounds good. Here's a, another thing that I found in this. So all throughout this chart, this, this rhythm section for this has always been uh, 10 and 7 on the, what is it, the A string or the blue string, I guess. It's always been that 10 and 7. But for some unknown reason, they switch it up here, just out of the blue, they change it. It's been consistently that 
7 to 10 to 7. And then they change it here to 10 and 12 on the same string, which it it gets the same thing. But it's such a stretch. So I don't know why they did that, uh, but essentially the way to change that is to, so that's a 12, right? It's the same note, a string above as a seven. And then they do the same thing here. So you just change that 12 to a seven. And now it should be the exact same thing. I'll make this a uh, pull off. Yeah. Weird. I don't know why they they did it for only one thing. So maybe they just got confused or something. So yeah, be on the lookout for stuff like that. Another thing that I just found about this that could potentially make it easier is instead of it being on the 10 right there, you can close the grouping with changing that. So let me see if I can switch my scene over here. So instead of... It can be... It just makes it a little bit easier. I don't know exactly where that is. Right, 10. This should be a 5, not a 7. Yeah, that's the right note. And just like that, you would basically copy and paste this to whatever part of the song needs it, which is, it, it reoccurs a lot. You just literally copy and paste.